director of children, and this is Sayla, my nine-month-old baby. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> if this is your first time, welcome. We have a really special message for you. Uh, Shannon Dunn is speaking all about youth, teens, and why they matter. We're continuing our Growing Young series, and we care about the next generation, and we hope that you do too. We want to thank you so much for your generous giving because we are creating environments here. We've been busy this summer painting walls, making it special for our children and our youth. So right here we have a cry room that's getting ready in case babies need to cry, even though you never do that. And we'll have a nursery all set up. Oh no, she does cry. It's true. Oh, never mind. She was just joking. Uh, and we can't wait to welcome everyone in in our September launch. We're thrilled about all of that. There are three ways that you can give. You can give online, you can give through our app, or you can give by mail. Thank you so much, and thank you for caring about the next generation. We hope you enjoy this message. Hi, Malibu Pacific Church Online. I'm Shannon, and I'm the Director of Student Ministry here at Malibu Pacific Church. What that means is I get to oversee programs for 4th through 12th grade students, and I love my job, and I love student ministry. And actually, I have a confession to make to you to today. Um, I actually was a teenager at one time. <laughs> Shocker. You probably think I still am a teenager. I'm not. I know. It's confusing. Uh, but also, I wasn't perfect, right? I made mistakes. That's my confession to you. I was a teenager that wasn't perfect. I made mistakes. I likely said cuss words. I talked back to my parents. I missed curfew. Um, I even had crushes on people. Like, don't tell anybody, right? And you know what? Let's, let's all confess right now. You might be alone, so just say it out loud. I was a teenager, and I wasn't perfect. If there's someone in the room next to you, say to them, hey, my name is... And I was a teenager, and I wasn't perfect. I made mistakes. Just get it out right now. Confess it to everybody, right? Because teenage years are hard. Do any of you remember what it was like to be that age, 13, 16, 18? It wasn't easy, and all of us made mistakes. All of us are still making mistakes. Let's be really honest. But don't worry. You don't have to confess your greatest sins to anybody right now. Well, last week we launched a new series. Andy and Katie started us off on growing young. If you did not see that message, I really want to encourage you to go back and find it. Um, it's posted here online and it would be great for you to watch that to understand really what the strategy um, of our church is. And so I would love for you to watch that if you haven't yet. But growing young... Um, just to give you a little refresher, is a conversation because what is happening in the church is that we're growing old. Yes, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm not being rude. But you and I, we are aging. We are all aging. We are all getting older. I know you can't tell because I have pink hair and I'm trying to hide the fact that I'm aging, but I am. And so are you. That's just the reality. But in the church, we're really seeing it and we're seeing it become a problem because we are aging. The church is aging and the church is shrinking. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's OK, because we still have kids and we have youth. True. But what's happening is that at least 50% of the youth who leave the church after high school, they graduate from high school, they don't come back to the church, right? Their faith hasn't stuck enough for them to come back and go to church once they have graduated high school. And that is scary and it's sad. And the reality is churches across America are missing their 18 to 29 year olds. What a bummer to miss that age group. That is a valuable age group. And so as a church, we want to create strategies that help to combat that problem and that issue. And so I want to talk a little bit about that today and go into specifically how we can love our teens right now, why they're here with us so that they don't leave the church when they graduate from high school. And so um, a little bit about me is that I'm a youth ministry nerd. I have a degree in that. Yes, you can get a degree in that. So I'm going to teach you a little, just a second of history of youth ministry. And I think it helps explain a little bit um, of what's happening in the church now. So um, I'm going to draw on the whiteboard. 
And what happened in the 70s, youth ministry started really in the 40s, but what happened in the 70s is that we started creating these extravagant, amazing, incredible youth ministry problems, uh, programs. Excuse me. Yeah, it shouldn't have become a problem, but it did. Let me just show you. What happened is we had the big church, right? The main worship service focused on adults, but we wanted to have other programs fo focused on the youth. And so what happened is we started creating these separate programs for youth ministry. And um, they were awesome. They were geared towards teenagers. They were geared towards youth. But they started becoming forgotten by the church. They were often programs put in basements. Um, they were completely siloed. And it was sort of like, drop them off. And as adults, we don't want to see them and we don't want to hear them. We're just happy that we hired someone uh, to take care of them and do fun games with them. But they're over there. We are over here. And it really became um, something that wasn't really good or healthy for the church and for the students. OK, and so that's sort of what happened. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about what scripture says about the church. I'm going to read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, Paul is writing this letter to the people of Corinth, and he's talking about the church and what's going on in the church at that time. And I think he has some really incredible things to say um, about the church and what it should look like. And so um, maybe you've heard this, maybe you haven't. But leading up to this, what I'm about to read, he explains that we as a church are one body but we have many members, right? So the body um, is representative of the church and the members are the members representative of each person, each individual um, in the church. And so it says in verse 15, now if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable are treated with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while the presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is placed as a part of it. Now when I hear that scripture, it reminds me of this drawing I did behind me, and that what happened with youth ministry is that it began to become so siloed, it was, it was like it wasn't even a part of the body any longer. And I'm thankful that we have a church that really um, loves the youth and hasn't totally done that. But at the same time, in general, um, one of the things that our teenagers are are facing is um, abandonment and systemic abandonment, right? And so systemic abandonment because programs created by adults for teenagers have set expectations, have set pressures, have um, been created sort of without the teenagers totally in mind in some cases. And so we're not necessarily doing what is absolutely best for our teens. And this has created silos, it's created abandonment, and that's created depression, anxiety, loneliness, fear. And our world is already um, difficult to live in. We don't need any, you know, uh, anything else causing pain for our teenagers, seriously, like we're in a pandemic. And so what can the church do to help come alongside and bring them back in. Um, I'm going to share a little bit about adolescent development with you, and I'm going to use the whiteboard again. Let me just erase this. So this, what I'm about to draw for you, is called the tightrope of adolescence. 
Okay, and so this is like a little bit of psychology development for you. This pole is going to represent childhood. And during childhood, you are living in dependence. So you are dependent on other people. You are dependent on adults. You need other people in order to survive and to thrive. Okay? And actually, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to draw this pole, which you might believe is going to be independence. But actually, the pole that represents adulthood is dependence. So, at, or, sorry, excuse me, is interdependence. So when we um, realize that we need to rely on other people to survive, that is when we're an adult. But on the in-between, on this tightrope between the two poles, this is adolescence, so roughly ages 13 to 19 or 25, depending on the case. Um, this is independence. So what adolescents are doing is they're, let me just put a little, little person right here. They are walking a tightrope of independence. They are learning how to navigate life, becoming more and more independent. And it's hard and it's scary. And guess what? They're going to make mistakes. They are going to fall. An adolescent is going to fall off of the tightrope. And so what as a church should we do and can we do to help them as people who know that teens matter to the church? We've seen what happens when teens don't matter to the church. So what can we do that we, now that we know they matter? What we can do is we can be the net, right? We are here as this net to catch them when they fall. Not if they fall, when they fall. We are all going to fall. That is part of the human nature. We are going to make a mistake. We're going to take a misstep. And teenagers are going to fall off of this tightrope. And so as a church, our job is to come underneath them, to love them and to support them and provide a safety net for when they fall. And um, isn't that actually a great thing to think about as adults too, right? We're here trying to build small groups for our teens to have these caring adults to be a safety net in their life. But don't you want that too? Don't you want to be a part of a small group full of people that would be a safety net for you when you fall, when I fall, when we fall? I mean, this goes beyond our teenagers, this concept. And that is what God has created with the body of Christ. We each have our own job. We each have our own gift and each age and stage, each part of the body is invaluable, right? Christ in scripture over and over flips on its head the idea that we should put the most important on the top. And instead he says, let's honor the least important. And so we can, can't as a church say, well, the kids, they're not as important because they don't tithe. No, this scripture says, put the weaker parts and honor them. They are indispensable, right? We can't say, well, the teenagers say weird things, so they're not as honorable. No, the scripture says they're a part of the body. And so we put them higher and we find ways to honor them, right? Because each of us is so valuable and so important. And so we want to do that as a church. We want to put these kids, we want to put these students, and we want to raise them up and elevate them, and we want to become a safety net to catch them when they fall, right? And so um, they are also another thing about teenagers is they're answering the questions, who am I, do I fit in, and what is my purpose, right? And where else do you want them to answer those questions than at the church? Where We want them to know they are a child of God, they do belong here and that they have a purpose in Jesus. And so we are inviting you to join us in that, to love a teenager, to become a safety net and to care for them. Um, before we wrap up, I just, I wanna share my personal story with you. I actually grew up here at Malibu Pacific Church. I started in the third grade and I just jumped right into the kids ministry. I thought it was the most fun thing I've ever done. And the youth pastor came and introduced himself and he was even more wild and crazy. And I thought that is what I wanna be a part of. But you know, I don't actually remember any of the sermons. Nope, I don't remember. And I don't really remember the games. Um, I don't remember the small group meetings specifically, but here's what I do remember. 
I remember Miss Cindy who invited me to teach Sunday school when I was a high schooler. I remember that made me feel valued and that I had a purpose in this church. And I remember Brian who was my middle school youth leader and I asked him hard and awkward questions about scripture and he never laughed and he sat with me and he gave me wisdom. Um, and I remember that that made me feel heard and feel seen. And I remember um, Jen and Keenan in high school, another uh, pair of youth leaders who um, cared for me and literally pretty much became a second family to me, opened their home, invited me to dinners when my parents got divorced. And they were my safety. They were my net when that hard thing happened in my life. Right? And I remember Tanya, she was the goofiest, silliest, and she told me awkward stories about from when she was a teenager, and she made me feel normal. And I remember Greg and Kay, who invited me into their home to be a babysitter because they saw a gift in me of working with children, and they made me feel valued. And so it was within the church, but it was the adults and the people who just invited me into their lives, who just had a conversation with me that really changed my life and really helped my faith grow and stick. And when I went away to college, I knew the church was a safe place. It was a place where I belonged and it was where I could go when I was away from home. And so that is our prayer. Our prayer that is that each of us would um, be able to engage with a student, engage with a teen, and help them know they are a part of the body of Christ. They are a valued member, and at the church is a safe place where they belong. Thank you so much for joining and listening to me share about student ministry here at Mount Pacific Church. Thank you so much, Shannon, for that message. We hope that you enjoyed and that you agree that teens and youth matter, right? So would you send this to a friend? You can like, share, subscribe. We want this message to go out to everyone because God cares about you and we know that you do too. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you soon.